Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's follow together. For real prayer, I think that's the kind of prayers our God desires from us. Real prayers. And, and by real prayers, I mean prayers that matter. James Wright, the prayers of a righteous person availeth much. Availeth much. You know, I, I think God wants us to pray about deep things, you know, real things. Um, earlier in James, he says, you guys, you know, you don't have because you don't ask. And he said, you don't receive because the things you ask for are, are selfish things. Like, the, they're not the things that really matter. And that made me think, you know, I think Jesus wants to hear from you about anything and, and everything, you know, right? Honesty, that's, you can't have a relationship unless it's built on honesty. So he wants you to come to him honestly. But it's like deep things. There's psalms that, you know, that say, you know, pour out your heart to him. You know, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you, right? God wants to hear from you, the, the real you, right? And, and like James said, when it's selfish stuff, man, and like, I think a lot of our prayers are, are shallow. They're not really like the deep things of the heart. And I think that's the prayers that God wants to hear from his people, you know, for your own life and, and for another person. Your heart crying out, you know, like, like Hannah in the Old Testament. She was crying out to the Lord so much that a guy that saw her praying didn't even think she was praying. She, he thought she was drinking because she was at, it says she was embittered in spirit, right? Because she's crying out to the Most High. So first off, it's who we're praying to, right? If you're praying to, to a thing or an object, it can't hear you. There's only one God who is the living God who can hear you and has the power to actually answer your prayer. You know, it, the word says, if we pray anything according to his will, we know that he hears us, right? Um, the lady, it was actually uh, Abraham's wife's servant way back in the day in Bible times, you know, had, had all this stuff happen to her because of her, her child, and they had to leave. And she's out in the desert, and she's crying out, and she says, you're the God who hears. We have a God who hears us, and he wants to hear for real prayers. You know, I'm not saying you shouldn't sit down and, and say thanks at dinner, but I think we like leave it at that, and, and that shouldn't be. like Jesus is life, right? So what you want to talk to life? <laughs> I would think so. Because you can get real honest with life and in life. And we need to be. And I think that's the prayers that God likes to answer. Is when we, you know, strip away all the nonsense. And we really connect with him, with our creator, with our sustainer, the giver of life and all good things. But he wants to hear from his people. And, you know, the second thing is, is not only prayers, you know, they can be in anguish and heartache and, and Lord God, I really feel like I need this, but we got to remember who we're praying to. It's the Most High. Um, I read Revelation 4 the other day, and it's just, man, I, I, I love it. It's talking about the throne room of heaven. John had a vision of the throne room, and he walks into the throne room through an open door, and he sees... Almighty God sitting on the throne and there's all these uh, elders and angels all around and all they say is holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. All glory and honor and power belongs to the Lord. You know, they're just blessing the Lord. It's all they do. And then it says they fall down on their face and worship Him. That's all they do. And I got to think, man, like, you ever like go to like a concert or something and, and see some or some an actor some, somebody famous all right have you ever seen somebody famous and you're like well you know like oh it's a, it's a big deal right they're famous but you know what you hang out with them a little bit maybe you get a backstage pass i don't know right you hang out with them a little bit still cool still cool 
what if what if that happened for a week, right? You're there for a week. Would they still be as cool, <laughs> right? Would you know you got to see them each and every day, and you know that they're their normal life, and they're this and they're that, and you know maybe a week, okay, maybe they're still awesome. A month, two months, a year, would you still be like, whoa, this is da da da? da. You know what I mean? No, you probably wouldn't be. But you know what? Those guys have been there since the beginning of time with, with the Lord saying, holy. I have a friend who said they have so many eyes on them. And you read Revelation 4. It talks about these crazy creatures with eyes all over them. And he said they have so many eyes. And, they, you know, they're looking at the Lord and saying, Whoa, have you checked them out from this view? <laughs> I don't know if that's why they have so many eyes. It was a crazy, crazy uh, vision that John had. But it was just the holiness, the, the almighty, the presence of God. And then it goes into Revelation chapter 5 talking about the lamb that was slain, that, that he purchased a people for God, you know, to be a kingdom of, of priests. And that's us, beloved. And that's the boldness. You know, we don't always, we don't see that with these eyes, but we see it with the eyes of the heart through faith. Man, that we can come because of the blood of Jesus into that presence of God, into that throne room. We can have boldness to approach the throne, you know, in and through Jesus we can have fellowship with the Most High. He says, you know, Jesus is the cornerstone and you too, you know, are being built into a holy habitation of God where he lives by his spirit. Man, we can have fellowship with the Most High God. Those prayers that you're praying aren't just going out here. They're going into the presence of a living God. And then there's multitudes of angels, multitudes upon multitudes of angels just worshiping. And looking in at all and our Savior, and we can just go right in and talk to Him about anything and everything. And I'm not trying to, you know, to dumb down, but like you can talk to Him about anything. But I really feel like the prayers God wants to hear from you, beloved, are the prayers of the heart, the things that really matter to you. And then not only that, praise and worshiping, yes, but putting it in His hands, knowing that you're taking it to Him and that you can trust Him because He loves you. He sent His Son to pay the price for you on the cross so you could enter into this new covenant, this new life, so the old could pass away and behold, all things become new. And putting it in His hands because Jesus is the Lord. He is good and He's faithful and we can trust Him. So cry your heart out to Him and trust Him that He knows the best answer. You know, things will happen in His time, and it will be for the... As Romans 8, you know, tells us, all things work for good. Those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Now, if you watch this channel, you know that I've said that a lot, because it's a promise I hold on to when things don't make sense, and I'm crying out to the Lord, like, why? Why is this? Why is that? You know, help me here. <laughs> a lot of that. But it's because he hears and he loves you. And he'll send angels to, to, to guide and protect you. And his spirit wants to dwell within you, beloved. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he gives you the Holy Spirit to live within you. You are a new person. You are a new creation. You are adopted as a son or a daughter and he wants to hear from his sons or daughters some for real prayers and the other side of that is gratitude thankfulness give thanks with a grateful heart give praise to the only one because he's given Jesus Christ his son Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the only one. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Give thanks. Give thanks for the little things. Give thanks for the big things. He is good and his love endures forever. He's worthy of all praise and I, I guarantee you when you cry your heart out to him you know like Hannah was crying so much that he's like man 
me woman, are you drunk, right? She wasn't drunk, but right after that, she's praising because she knows the creator of heaven and earth, and that's what you can have through the Son. You can be a son in him. Amen. He's the good shepherd. Be blessed.